Hi, Tom. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I am on today with Tom Screen, who is the technical director at Everywhere. We have had a lot of questions, Tom, from our community, from users, from people who are new to the Hedera story. And so we really appreciate you just coming on today and, um, and chatting with me for a few minutes. Oh, hi, Zenobia. You're very welcome. It's, it's, I'm, I'm enjoying doing more of these these days. It's, it's been a great pleasure. Good, good. All right. So, you know, just to get started, can you tell me a little bit about Everywhere and your role there? Of course. Everywhere is an IoT solutions provider company. Uh, we're a British technology company. We use sensors and cloud-based software to monitor critical assets and equipment in different industry sectors. One sector that we've been focusing on recently, which obviously people have heard about is healthcare. We've been working with the NHS in our region to monitor COVID-19 vaccines that are being used to bring this pandemic, hopefully to a swift end. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm the co-founder of Everywhere. My role is focused on the technology vision for the company. I'm responsible for the roadmap, the, the technology roadmap, solutions architecture, software development and, and implementation, really everything from concept to customer. And never a dull day. <laughs> yes, I'm sure, especially now. Um, you mentioned that you're working with the NHS. Can you share a little bit more about what you're doing with them? Certainly, we are. So we're an approved technology provider for the NHS. We've been working together now for a number of years, and you know, we're, we're digitally monitoring a key part of the NHS's cold chain. It's all connected to our cloud-based platform in real time. All right. And why did you need to use a distributed ledger as part of your solution? So we made a conscious decision that we wanted to add DLT to our technology stack. And Hedera has been a perfect fit because of its security, scalability, uh, the speed to finality. For us, this adds, uh, adds something to our technology stack that we don't have, which is the, the trust and the data integrity, which if your platforms are running in siloed cloud platforms, you know, people have to trust you and, and that's fine. But, you know, when we're looking at larger, larger systems like supply chains uh, where interoperability is becoming more and more important, then using DLT is, you know, it, it adds those capabilities to your technology stack. I really want to underscore something though, because it's something that I've seen a few questions about coming up in, in as responses to the, the recent media coverage we've had. Um, and that is that, you know, databases and distributed ledgers, they're not mutually exclusive. Um, you know, distributed ledger actually adds something to the technology stack. It, it, it brings that trust, it brings that integrity in the first instance. And in the future, it's going to bring all kinds of other other advantages it it doesn't mean that all of our data is stored in a, in a dlt and we've got rid of our databases databases are still a critical part of the system you need very very fast time series databases for example in order to be able to carry out the real-time analytics that we do thank you for explaining that i think um that you know that definitely is an area where we have seen a lot of questions so i think that's really helpful yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not really surprised that it it sort of comes up as a question, and, and I can sort of see from the outside that you know there's this narrative of blockchains are going to take over and everything's going to be on blockchain, and I, you know it, there's there's still the reality of enterprise enterprise applications needing to be able to to connect together, but the benefits of of adding distributed ledgers to that to that technology stack is that it really enables greater capabilities between those enterprises and at the moment you know that for example is one enterprise being able to trust the data for another enterprise because it can verify it now it doesn't mean that you're looking at the raw data but it, it could be that you're using for example uh, transaction hashes to verify that the contents of the data hasn't changed it's going to become also more important with uh, we'll, i'm sure we'll get we'll get on to tokenization shortly but 
uh, you know, one one area in, in in enterprise software is is master data, and you know, to be able to use a distributed ledger, for example, to store master data, you know, records of customers or vendors, products, is is going to solve some some you know tricky problems for for enterprises. Yeah, I think when you're on the outside, you know, a lot of people have the tendency to believe it's rip and replace, but that's not really how most systems work, right? They're, um, you know, it's additive and um, you find different benefits from using different technologies together. Yeah, I mean, that's not to say that something isn't going to change in the future. And, and, and I'm sure we may well see, start to see distributed databases that, that actually at the core have disputed ledger as, as part of their setup. Um, I mean, I know there are databases already that include uh, sharding uh, and, and that involves consensus algorithms um, in order to be able to, to come to a, an agreement between those databases known to quorum. So it's not inconceivable that, that that could be an evolution, but you know, at the moment there's still very, and there's still very technical needs to be able to access data very, very fast, as I said. So using time series database, for example, for storing telemetry, it's just not, it's, it's not feasible to do that kind of analytics on top of a, on top of a DLT or not today, not today. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. And, you know, now it's been a few months since you started rolling this out. I think in, you know, in 2020, 2021, that sort of feels like a few years. Um, but can you give us a sense of how things are going and what kinds of things have you discovered or learned in this process? So the rollout has been going very well. And it's 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 been a really, it's been a very good process. I, I'm hesitating because I think it's actually been more powerful than we realized. Uh, as I said, we've been working with the NHS for, for quite a lot, a long time. And, you know, now we're, monitoring the COVID-19 vaccines. One of the things that I've been really, I suppose, humbled in a way to see is, is just the impact that something as perhaps esoteric as temperature monitoring can have on operational efficiencies across the hospital and the business benefits that that, that can have. You know, we're talking about the time saved for medical staff not having to manually do a job that is now done for them. And we've done calculations and depending on the size of the hospital, that could be anything from a saving of, you know, 300,000, 600,000 pounds or dollars per year, just on staff costs of doing that job, not to mention the, the wastage. But, you know, even the money side of it aside, it's the, the staff, the reception that we've had from the staff have been great, all the medical staff, they've been really pleased to see the system going in. That's been really validating. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've said it before and I think it, it doesn't, it, it's good to, I think it's good to think about it, you know, the monitoring, monitoring the efficiency of medicines um, without sounding too hyperbolic can literally save lives. You know, people rely on these medicines and it's it, obviously it's the COVID-19 vaccine today. We, you know, we monitor everything from ophthalmology drugs, eye drops to chemotherapy drugs. And so that, as I said at the beginning, it's quite humbling. And um, yeah, it, it, every day is a school day. Right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's so amazing the work you're doing. And I think, you know, anything that can help alleviate some of that burden on some of these yeah. overworked staff, you know, aside, like you said, aside from the monetary costs, anything to make their lives easier. Um, it's just remarkable. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as you think about this longer term, you know, you've mentioned, yes, today it's, it's COVID-19, but there are so many applications. Um, how, you know, what's your vision? What do you see you know, where do you see everywhere? I won't ask you in five to 10 years, <laughs> but you know, where do you see the evolution of this in terms of its support for organizations? Uh, well, I, I've got my keyword written down is scalability. Um, you know, we're, I, I think, yeah, Hedera's talked about quite openly, 2021 is the year of scale. For, for us, it's the same. You know, we're, we're looking to, we're applying that trusted data now at scale. Um, 
we are interoperate you know we're, we're interoperating with erp systems to be able to to manage um i mean parts as i said parts of those nhs cold chains uh, and that can deliver benefits for you know key sensor key centers of distribution nationally and i think where we look towards uh, certainly everywhere is looking towards the enterprise asset management space the technology that that we are using here and that we've described and that you know the whole stack if you like so everything from Hedera to, to AWS and all everything that we've built on top of it you know as we look to the future and the convergences of these technologies I think where it puts us and, and personally my background and my colleagues backgrounds in enterprise we're really looking at the enterprise asset management space so EAM and the disruption potentially i don't really like that word so much but the impact that that could have on that particular area um you know i think it was crm a few years ago when salesforce sort of came up and and, and got into that area i'm not I'm not suggesting that we're going to be the next salesforce of eam but you know that is a particular area you know i mentioned master days before that and and linking together um, telemetry that you're recording about your assets with your master data, um, with your asset inventories and your business processes uh, combined with tokenization is, is I think, you know, where the, where the future is for, for enterprise. Yes, I think I, I'm, we I'm, definitely I'm, agree with that, Tom. Um, you know, I'd love to hear if you can, you know, I know you saw um, Hedera has rolled out the Hedera token service. Um, how, does that excited about that. <laughs> how does that potentially play a role in your in your vision? Yeah, so I can probably geek out a little bit. <laughs> Please. Yeah, well, HDS, it's it's intriguing, really. I, I think we've you know we've seen such a, a sweep of of technology over the past ten years. You know, everything. I I don't want to. I, I certainly don't want to talk about cryptocurrency, but the evolution of the underlying technology. Um, that now we've got to tokenization services like HTS, um, and and combining that with HCS, you know, it's for me there was sort of a join the dots moment when you know thinking about what we do in asset management and the ability to then so we talk about digital twin is is a concept in IoT for quite a while. Um, being able to combine the digital twin concept with with tokenization so that not only can we have digital versions of our assets but they are they're tokenized so that you get obviously the the data integrity and, and the trust benefits that we've we've talked about so we can track all of the transactions that are related to those assets throughout their lifetime from um, you know inception to deconstruction and but to be also able to then tokenize that and 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 save the state of that as well in a, in a similarly immutable way um and then you know the, the mind boggles at all the different benefits i know that that's been touched upon um sort of, sort of changing how businesses can transfer assets and changing ownership models it's it's really really exciting uh, and it's exciting to be part of that from an early stage it's it's exciting to be able to take the risks and and try and see where the i was going to say business benefits come from it's a the most important thing out of all of this and i know a lot of people watching are technology people and 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 you know new technologies come out all the time and, and they do seem really exciting. I think this is, this is very different in the sense of the impact that that can have on true business value. And that for me is very much, yeah, kind of a light bulb moment. It's certainly, you know, when I, when I first came across Hedera, you know, seeing how it operated, seeing how it worked technically and, it, you know, in terms of business, the governing council, um, you know, there is that that is very much a real solution that can be applied for solving real world problems in a way, as I said, that, it, that is scalable. And, and that is the key word that I think I'll end on. 
Well, Tom, thank you so much. We know you are incredibly busy. We thank you for the work that you are doing. And we so appreciate you spending some time with us today. Oh, it's always uh, a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Yes, you too. Thank you. We look forward to your update. And um, yes, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. I hope we can speak soon. Take care. And bye to everybody in the community. Bye. <laughs>